Here I wanted to show you some features of the marsupial skull that sets them apart from other groups of mammals. And I'm going to use a, an American opossum, Didelphus virginiana. And to do this, I have a couple different specimen. Uh, one is a juvenile, and it's represented by the skull in the middle of the screen and the jaws here on the far right. And what the juvenile shows that is also present in adults is this inflected medial angle of the jaw. And just about all living marsupials exhibit an inflected angle of the lower jaw. They also exhibit a higher number of incisors than placental mammals do. So in the opossum, you can see a large canine right there. And in the lower jaw, you see four incisors on each half. And in the upper jaw, you can see the canines here on either side. And then you can also see the suture with the premaxilla. All this bone at the anterior tip of the skull is the premaxilla, and on each side you can see five incisors. And in the upper jaw, that's, they're always rooted, the incisors are always rooted in the premaxilla. Another thing you can notice are these large fenestrae, that's Latin for window, these large holes in the posterior part of the palate, and that's true in the, in the juvenile here and also in the adult, and that's, of course, in addition to the incisive foramina. I should point out, as I hope is obvious, this adult skull on the far left here is, has been virtually dissected, so, um, so you can see inside the rostrum, whereas the juvenile skull in the middle is it's a full skull. And the, all the bones are represented, and you can see the incisive foramina. Foramina is plural, foramina is singular, uh, right there, in addition to the palatal fenestrae. The incisors are comparable both in the juvenile and in the adult. Here's the juvenile, and you can have, you can see one, two, three, four, five incisors. Same on the adult, although that tooth right there is a bit truncated. Nonetheless, it's still present. And then you can see that very large canine on both specimens, followed by a smaller premolar, anterior premolar, just behind it. then followed by another premolar. And then you start to see things uh, are a bit different here. And if I zoom in on the, the adult specimen, counting back from the canine, let's make these images comparable. So there's the canine, that's that anterior premolar. Here's the middle premolar, fairly similar looking as as in the adult specimen. But then we get a very different looking tooth. This last premolar here on the adult, followed by the last premolar here in the juvenile specimen. And I hope you can tell where I'm going with this. This is a deciduous tooth, and this is its permanent replacement. What you're looking at is the last premolar locus in an opossum, which is typical for marsupials. That's the only replaced tooth in the jaws of of marsupials. So if we were to now virtually dissect these specimens, let's start with the the juvenile Didelphus. You can see already without dissecting that there is a, another molar in the crypt that's just at the very end of this molar row that's in the process of erupting. But let's see if we can virtually dissect away some of the bone uh, adjacent to that premolar. In fact, bone generally and I want to show you that permanent tooth that's hiding out there in the crypt. You're just starting to see, see it right there. See if I can get a little more of that bone to disappear. And I'm just adjusting in a different window the transfer function. So there I've almost completely removed all the bone. And as I move it, you can just see where that bone is relative to the teeth. You can even see the that permanent last premolar on the other side of, of the skull, the other maxilla. Uh, and that's showing you that tooth in the crypt waiting to replace its deciduous precursor. So let's bring the bone back. And so that explains the very different appearance of that crown. That's a deciduous crown compared to the crown on the adult. So let's get rid of the bone on the adult, just so I can convince you that that tooth does not have a replacement 
waiting to erupt, nor do any of the others. That's the individual's full set, full complement of teeth. And what you typically see in adults, adult Delphus at least, are four molars, one, two, three, four, three premolars, one, two, three, a canine, and then as we've said already, these five incisors. And I might also point out that the typical in evolutionary biology and mammalogy, we name the teeth or we give them numbers according to the position anterior to posterior, one, two, three, four, five, first canine, there's only one of them. And then we, with premolars, we typically start with one, two, and three. So P1, P2, P3. It gets a little confusing because in certain lineages, we know that, say, the middle premolar locus is lost. So in some papers, you might see P1, P2, P4, P5, even though it's a, you know, it's a continuous set of premolars in that individual. We can discuss that some other time. The main thing is to observe that this adult has a different dental formula than the juvenile. So not only is does it ha retain that deciduous last premolar, but three of its molars are erupted. In fact, the last one in the juvenile isn't fully erupted, and, and eventually there will be a fourth molar locus erupted, and that's what you're seeing here. That's the fourth molar that had this individual continued to live, it would have erupted a fourth molar locus. And then finally, let's just look quickly in the lower jaw. This is the same individual as the juvenile in the middle. It's just its lower jaw and I'll virtually dissect out some of that bone so that you can see in the lower jaw, just as in the upper, there is a tooth hiding away in that, in that lower jaw waiting to erupt. And there it is. That's the crown. You can see it on both sides. That's the right tooth in its crypt. That's the left last premolar in its crypt with the deciduous premolar still above it. So just to bring the bone back. So you can see all that intact again. That is the dentition of an opossum. The ear region in marsupials does not generally consist of a fully ossified bulla. At least in an opossum, in Didelphus, what you have is the anterior part is walled off by part of the allus phenoid. And so that's what you're looking at right now. This is the middle ear space and a bone called the allus phenoid comprises a part bulla, right? So bulla simply meaning the bony enclosure of the middle ear. And what you can see here is the petrosal bone that encloses the cochlea or the inner ear. And the ossicles on this side are missing. So if there were ear ossicles present, you would expect to see a, a foot plate of a stapes there in the oval window. Here's the round window also leading into the cochlea. And most of that bulla is open, except, as I mentioned, for the allus phenoid right there. And you can see uh, most of that suture between the squamosal forming the jaw joint and this allus phenoid, the wing of the sphenoid bone. So here is the stapes bone present on the left side of this skull. Just to zoom out to give you perspective where we are. Those are the occipital condyles. Here's the allus phenoid bulla. There's the petrosal bone, and if we look into that middle ear space, and I shall crank up the transfer function a bit so as to render that stapes, that's it. That's the stapes bone. That's the first element in this ossicular chain. You can just make it out situated in the oval window. There's the round window in a largely open bulla.